Right then. Uh, slightly different to the usual sort of live stream playing over blues stuff and blah blah blah. I wanted to talk to everyone today about this. A 1961 Burns Black Bison four pickup model, which many Burns fans know is probably the, the jewel in the crown of the Burns name. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk a bit more about what this guitar actually is, as opposed to it just being a Burns. So, <clears throat> it was made in 1961, uh, it was basically Jim Burns' attempt at uh, rivaling the Les Paul Custom. So as you can see, you've got black finish, you've got the white trim around most of the plastic parts, you've got gold hardware, like a Les Paul Custom, um, you've got a bound neck, as you can see here along this one. Uh, you also have mother of pearl tuning pegs. It's basically like the Rolls Royce. It's as m many things as you can possibly get on uh, an electric guitar to make it as look as flashy as possible. Um, basically, the guitar has a floating cradle tremolo system here, which you may be able to see if I take this off. It's all engineered together. If you look at it, you can see. Uh, the pins that hold bits on it's unnecessary to have it, but still you know it's part of the part of the act as they say um, So the cradle trim what have we got here? We have similar to that of a I, It's quite hard. It's quite hard to explain really you can see it a bit closer up here um, It basically rolls on this bar strings wrap round it. This is attached to two uh, pulley pulley systems which go into the bottom of the trim so you have two big bolts holding that to the bottom and then you've got patent plates with the serial numbers on them this one is number 138 it says uh, the patent numbers on the other side the whole thing is built into the front so if you think like a Fender Stratocaster tremolo it's like that but it's basically mounted on the front and not the back like most Fender Strats um, another point that you can see on these guitars is the fact that they have a cover along the top of the strings now this thing is fairly crude. It looks great and everything, but it's completely impractical. Um, it also rattles against... You hear that? Oh, there it goes, you see? And it just basically comes off like this. There's a plate underneath with two holes, which bolted on. I say bolted on, it just basically pinned on by those, as you can see, which again is another sort of fashion over function side to the guitar. Um, also, we have a, a mahogany neck and body here, which is also carved in, it's like a sculpted heel. Like carved if you can see this so it looks like it's one piece and just carved straight in uh, feels quite nice to be fair it's a good one to have you know at the top there it's not so yeah it does have a sort of a unique feel to it I guess in that respect um, the original models I'm told had ebony boards this one has a rosewood one and the reason being is because the ebony didn't sit well at all on the neck uh, a lot of them were changed under warranty for a mahogany, well, a rosewood neck, um, because the ebony didn't work. I don't know how many of them survived with uh, ebony necks, but by all means put it in the comments. Um, so it was all gold plated. Uh, it was later plated in chrome, under warranty again, I'm told. Um, there were 160 guineas new as well in 1961, which today equates to about five grand. So if you wanted one of these things nowadays, it would it would be a, a killer, basically, on the old bank account. Um, pickups were made by Goldring, which were a hi-fi manufacturer, as uh, some people may know. They are low impedance. Um, they also have four separate channels and combinations, as well as two separate circuits, which makes it even more complicated for if you're trying to work out how to A, rewire, or B, build one. Not that anyone would, but anyway, so you've got the A circuit here, Oh, sorry, I'm on the B circuit. Let me tell, tell a lie. So on the A circuit, this is how it sounds. It's a very sort of nasally, very thin sound. And of course, when you put it on circuit B, you get a lot more bass, a lot more volume, really. So it's yeah, a much different sort of sounds more sort of out of phase it seemingly is out of phase on most of them um, the the pickups have a plug they're like a plug-in circuit as well I'm not gonna take this apart because I haven't got that much time and this is probably gonna be a long video as anyway so um, here we have our volume our complete master volume for all of it 
bit crackly. 61, what are you going to say? Uh, this is actually circuit number two. This is, uh, sorry, pickup number two. So you get pickup number one, so you get this type of sound. So that's very sort of high pitch, very nasally. I believe that's the back pickup. And you have pickup number two, which does have its faults in the circuit, I feel. Probably needs a clean, to be honest. Um, then we have number three. three and pick up number four again it's almost like one of them goes in a f in phase and one of them goes out to my ears anyway I found a decent sort of sound going from number two I think it was when number two works needs a clean on the B circuit so I managed to get quite a good sound out of that basically what I do now is play for a couple of minutes if you have any uh, questions or anything uh, do let know in the comments I can try my best to answer them um, this specific one came into a guitar shop I worked in years ago and it arrived in a bin bag, it had been sitting in someone's shed. So someone had this super rare guitar sitting in a shed and they bought it in a bin bag. The uh, binding had to be corrected because it, it was very rough and tired after the years of sitting in the shed. But we're pretty much back to normal with it now so it plays and it, you know, it does the job. Anyway, I'll give it a quick blast clean, going through a dual showman reverb here, a 72 one, which is the oldest amp I have, uh, and that uh, is completely clean, obviously it's just a guitar straight in so you can hear a variation of the pickups. 